Hi guys and welcome back, this is James and today we are making a leather travel wallet for storing your passport, boarding passes, cards, documents or foreign banknotes, things of that nature while you're travelling. This is a present for my father and I am making it out of 1.4mm thick veg tan leather. Uh, you can find the template down below, it will be linked in the description. It is a template I bought online, it costs I think 6 or 7 dollars and I'm sure you guys can find it as well. And I would definitely recommend buying templates to get started off if you're not totally sure what you're doing or if you find something you know that it will be uh, exactly what the person wants. So if, ex if the template is exactly the project you're working on then go for it I think it's a worthwhile investment it will make, enable you to make the same one over and over if you want to uh, in my case I was very happily making it here um, as I mentioned it is a 1.4 veg tan leather I will be dyeing it in dark brown with Fibings oil uh, brown is it dark brown or walnut I believe I think it's walnut uh, dye and as you see, as you will see, uh, I actually put on a lot of dye and the leather goes very dry. Um, so this is something I've mentioned a few times in previous videos. Uh, in this case, I did dilute it with half and half of uh, it was pure alcohol to try and make it easier to apply. But I think I just applied too much and it came out incredibly dark, which I don't mind. But at the same time, I think you could definitely get away with having less dye, especially knowing that the uh, oil afterwards that you'll be adding on, the Neatsfoot oil, will help you make that colour darker again. Um, and as we'll see in a second, once the dye is finished, the actual pieces have sort of uh, really toughened up. Not necessarily toughened up, but it's dried out the oil a lot. And you can see how it's curved around there on all the pieces. Now, at first, I was very worried about this. I, I was worried it would be brittle, so I applied generous amounts of Neatsfoot oil on all of the pieces, and they were still like this. I think, in, in hindsight, I just put on too much uh, dye. Uh, the colour turned out very dark, and I love the colour indeed, but it could be a bit lighter. Um, so, yeah, maybe just in retrospect, the big issue I was having is applying too much dye, and that's why it gave me that kind of uh, effect. Uh, in the end result, though, it's fine. I'll be honest, it worked out very well. Uh, no worries whatsoever, because the oil really helped out give me some more of that elasticity in the leather, which worked well for just bringing it back to its normal shape. At this point, I'm getting all the edges roughed out and ready to be burnished because these are edges once again, which I will not have access in the next few. Uh, I will not have access to these in the next few steps. So it's very important to get them properly uh, sanded down, then dyed, and then burnished. I will be using something a bit different here for the burnishing process, as obviously the usual uh, sanding, dyeing, and then using gum trag. For burnish but also I'll be finishing with the Dremel so I've had this lying around for quite some time and I've never been able to have a consistent edge doing it hand handheld like this every time the edge is it's good it works well but it's just not as straight as I would like it to be so at this point I decided to try something different let's see what happens if I clamp down the Dremel and instead of moving the Dremel along the edge of the leather I'll actually move the leather along the Dremel and you know what, guys? It's I, I am never going to do anything else differently from now on. This has been the easiest way of getting a very consistent, very fast burnish on all my edges. Um, the Dremel itself is a... It's actually a good Dremel I got off Amazon. It was a re in, in promotion, but um, my guess is you can do this with pretty much any Dremel and just a cheap bracket stand to clamp it in there as well as a uh, small... So the bit I'm using at the end it was made specifically for burnishing. I got it off Amazon as well. And all this you can find very cheaply on Amazon. I think if you go for a cheap version, a cheap Dremel, uh, I think this setup might be around the $40 for a decent setup. So it's actually, uh, in in the long run, it should be a very interesting uh, thing to have lying around and technique to have. The first card holder goes onto the right 
panel here. This panel will be for uh, boarding passes. And uh, again, I won't have access to this later, so it's important to do this now. I'll tell you, uh, in all honesty, the gluing job here was hastily done. I could have done it better. I definitely could have done it better, and I regretted it once I saw the result at the end. It, it's okay, it could have been much, much better, and I'm a bit disappointed about that. I am now fitting sorry, the left-hand panel, so this will take the passport and cards, and uh, I'm just checking the position here and preparing the initial positioning of the card holders with the initial stitching, because obviously you have to stitch down the bottom of the card holders so that the cards don't slip out from the top and just go down to the bottom, which would be really, really annoying. So once I've uh, finished uh, stitching all that, obviously going again with my stitching irons and punching holes and stitching there. I'm not going to be showing you much of the stitching process here. I, I think I've shown you an, an more than sufficiently uh, sufficient uh, so st stitching in previous videos. So in this video, I'm just going to skip all the stitching part and show you the results. So uh, after gluing that down, clamping it down for about a good hour or so, I, it's now ready to get stitched up on the side. Um, the leather being a weird shape, again, having turned insidewards, uh, having curved inwards, was scaring me because I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to line it up properly, which is why I, I probably used a bit too much glue in this. Um, I was really worried about getting those edges up and nicely done, so I check once more for the fitting, uh, figure out that, okay, we're ready to go. Let's. Uh, Let's glue this bad boy up, but before doing that, I first have to glue on the document holder to the right panel. Um, bear in mind, I am I had modified my template slightly. This panel here that I am gluing the card holder on actually does not exist in the template, and this is an extra piece that I made for symmetry and also to give my father a bit more choice in terms of uh, placing card notes, if you bank notes, I mean, if you wanted to. Uh, it's just one extra panel that I added in up to you to decide if you want to do that. If you do, all you have to do is uh, figure out what the size of the, the panel on the left hand side is and just duplicate that and uh, that worked fine for me and I'm sure you guys would be able to do something similar if you wanted to adjust and adapt your own template. Um, so once I'm, once I'm happy that the glue is setting on the right hand side panel, I can come back to the left hand side panel here and start scribing in my stitching line and hitting down those or punching through those holes. It is now fully stitched and I am dyeing it. Once more, this is an area which I will not have access to later on in the build. So it's important to do this now and to get it nicely dyed and burnished. You can see how dark this leather is. And again, in hindsight, I think I might have been, I'm actually, no, I'm definite. I, <laughs> I applied too much dye on this one. And I think that is certainly something I should have corrected uh, or I will correct in the future. One of the things that I am always struggling with is figuring out in advance what the final colour of my dye will be. It's something that is really tough and I'm sure that if you're used to using uh, one dye over and over you know exactly what the end result will look like. But I was st I'm still struggling with that and that's probably why I dyed it too much. Always bear in mind that the Neatsfoot oil finish you will apply on will darken the leather just a bit more and that's something I tend to forget uh, when I apply and dye because I'm looking when I'm dying I try and get the final result there and then and that's not the way you should be doing it. I'm now finally getting this left hand side panel stuck to the back of the wallet and I'm actually quite content with the way this is going so the gluing uh, goes on here. Uh, I did skive down quite a lot of those uh, card holders just to give me that extra or that or just to bring down the thickness a bit and yes my work surface is getting more and more dirty as we progress i might have to change that work surface soon and i am now happy with gluing on the second panel uh, and i find out at this point that my actual the back of the wall is actually too big so having to cut off the excess here it's not a very good fit but it works well in the end um at this point i have now sanded a lot all the way down one side and progressing slowly around the other sides and I've decided that okay I'm now ready to start stitching so I go ahead and mark my stitching lines 
punch through my holes and get the stitching done. I won't be showing you the stitching here once more. Uh, I think, again, if you, there were plenty of great tutorials on stitching and watching me stitch is not going to be a very good thing, I don't think, for any beginners because I'm stalling myself. Um, but I'll show you the end result any second now. Bear in mind that this is after stitching, after, again, sanding, more and more sanding, and dyeing, and finally burnishing the edges. Uh, for these edges, I did not use the Dremel trick. I went straight away to the wood slicker, as well as a piece of cloth, which I usually use. And you can see the result. I'm very satisfied. I've never made something like this before. I'm very happy with the result. I'm sh I hope my father will, will love it, uh, and I hope he'll be able to enjoy it for many, many years. And when he's finished uh, traveling, which one day he probably will stop traveling for whatever, and hopefully I'll look forward to be able to inherit it myself, because yes, I do hope this will uh, last for generations, at least for good two generations. Uh, having a look at the edges, I am very pleased with the way they turned out. They are looking good, at least good enough for me. They're not perfect, far from it, but they're very nice considering that the leather was very tough to work with and I was a bit worried that uh, the over dye would cause dryness as I've seen in previous projects. But no, uh, the final result is actually quite nice. The glue didn't get in my way too much. And here you go, this is uh, just my regular day-to-day -day bag. I did not make this, by the way, this bag is... <laughs> bought in a shop, unfortunately. I'd love to be able to make something like this. And you can see how the, the wallet would work. So these are old train tickets which I had lying around and they would fit in there. The passport holder is still a bit stiff but that is absolutely normal and actually a good sign. When you're making a card holder or something similar to this, I, I do believe it should be quite stiff at first. It should fit but it should be stiff because leather, vegetable leather does tend to stretch very slightly but that slight stretch is more than enough for you to uh, build over the years a quality tool, a quality um, wallet or handbag or anything that works perfectly for you, uh, which is hopefully something that uh, my father will find with this piece. Uh, do let me know in the comments once more, as always, what do you think of this video and if you have any tips or tricks you want to share with me and the community. I know lots of people are reading uh, the comments and it's great to have you all here. Thanks a lot once more for watching and uh, hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss a single one of my future videos. And in the meantime, thanks guys, this is James, signing off.